Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Stu Tencent. But before that, this video is brought to you by Joe Six Pack American and Chasey Dog. Thank you for being Farmer Barons. So, the Stu Tencent map can be found over at the Farming Simulator.com website or the in game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC players. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Stu Tensen, a small town in Lower Saxony. This town and landscape are based on the original and have been supplemented with various sale and production outlets. In the west of the map, another village and a railroad station have been created to add an extended gameplay experience. On this map, you'll find 96 purchasable areas, 60 of which are fields, four farms, three purchasable field barns, as well as a greenhouse. Now, there are various forests and meadow areas as well multiple selling points, production points, two gas stations, a livestock, and vehicle dealer. Now, this map does have some required mods. Those required mods include the silage silo pack, the old farm package, placeable slurry trader, bunker silo, small manure heat pack, hessen farm, pigsty, slurry tanks, old barn with shelter, small garden, farmhouse, Nevers Fielder, Franconian Farm Buildings, BDI Shed and Storages, Workshop, Workbench, and German Village Fire Department. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are also going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. There are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food or review, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, you will find that the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in New Farmer Mode. In addition, you do have starting machinery in all game modes. Of course, the only difference is going to be then that you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. In addition, I loaded this map up on my low-end test system, which is using integrated AMD graphics, and I was getting a slightly lower than 60 FPS frames when I was looking in this general direction after loading into the map. When I did a full 360, I was getting a nice solid 60 FPS pretty much everywhere other than when I was looking in this direction. I did find that when I walked this direction and basically made my way across the street, the frame rates popped back up to a nice solid 60. So I would say that depending on where you are on the map, on a low end system, you may find that the frame rates are somewhere between 60 and low 50s. So you may want to be cautious about how much machinery you have placed at any one given point. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. This is a standard size map. When I saw this map was for PC only, I thought, oh, well, maybe it's 4X. But no, upon further inspection, this is a standard size map. We do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 available on this map. In addition, if you do have the premium expansion, you will have your red beets, carrots, and parsnips as well. If we take a look at our farmland overview. We start out owning a fair number of fields or farmland parcels. Farmland 9090 is the main starting farm that can be bought in any alternate game mode for $184,512. In addition to that, we have farmland ID 30, farmland ID 9. 11, 50, 18, 42, 65, and 67. There is a biogas plant at farmland ID 86. And as the description said, there are multiple farms. And as it would be, all the four of the farms are right here in this close area. So we have our main starting farm, which is going to be cow, pig, and chicken, farmland ID 90. There is a sheep and pig farm at farmland ID 83. There is a horse area at farmland ID 73. And then a cow farm at farmland ID 74. In addition to that, you will find some other viable areas. We have a couple silage bunkers over here right across the street at farmland ID 91. In addition, farmland ID 96, we just have a random kind of barn or shed right beside a field. We also have the same thing here at Farmland ID 66. 
as well as farmland ID 93. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Now let's go ahead and then cross-reference these farmlands with the actual field sizes themselves using the field calculator screen. You can see here we have fields of range and size from less than one hectare I did see one field that was larger than six. Here we have field 35, 9.75 hectares in size, field 54, 10.87. So we range it anywhere from nearly 11 to under one hectare. With respect to our crop counter, we do have the standard FS22 crop counter available to us here on this map. And with respect to our price of screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. We also have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all the base game production items, we continue to see the trend where we are indeed able to sell all the base game production items. We also have the ability to buy bulk lime at two buy points. And then we do have the ability to sell stones. So if we are playing with stones enabled, we're ready to go. Now, with respect to our other productions, farm production pack, nope. Don't have the ability to sell any of that, nor do we have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion productions either. So if there are things you want to do with respect to farm production pack or the platinum expansion, you will need to put down not only the production, but also the sell point. Now, as we have seen pretty standard, the tails have turned with respect to the premium expansion, and we do have the ability to sell those crops and products. Those playing with pumps and hoses will have the ability to sell your separated manure. And those playing with straw harvest will also have the ability of getting rid of your hay and straw pellets at multiple sell points. You start out with a pretty decent list of starting machinery. All of it is new, none of it is leased, and is all fairly well maintained. As I mentioned earlier, the main starting farm includes a pig area, as well as chicken coop and cow shed. We do have contracts available on this map. We do not own any production chains at the start. And this map also does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fent Vario 312 and the Fent Favorite 515C small tractor. We have the Fent 718 Vario medium tractor and the Dutzfar Topliner 4090H harvester. That harvester is paired up with the 4090H header and header trailer as well. We have a Schaefer 2630 front loader. We have the Welgar DK-115 trailer, a pair of them, actually. We also have the Carino 3FX cultivator. We have the Nordstein HK-25 NS-3030 cedar and power hero combination. We have the ZATS-3200 fertilized spreader. We also have the TA-12050 power spread plus Breitner manure spreader. The Super C 800 slurry tanker and the GMD-4411 side mower. For our grass work, we have the GF8712 Tedder and the GA4731 Windrower as well. We have to pick up bulk material, Boss Alpine 251 Forge Wagon, and to bale, we have the Impress 125 F Pro Round Baler. To feed our animals, we have the RA142 TMR Mixer, as well as the Silage Roller from Kliegel to Compact or Silage. We have the Q5M Front Loader Arms, for the front loader, we have the pallet fork, universal bucket, and manure fork. And then we wrap it all up with a single 650 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. Now let's go ahead and take a look across the street because all the farms are literally right here together. It's gonna make the collection of farm tours fairly straightforward. Coming in here to our starting farm, we have a kind of a dumping station here for root crops or whatever material. A couple of nice small sheds. Oh, actually, I am mistaken. This is the horse farm right next door to our starting farm. Let me go ahead and buy the other 
farms and then we'll do our full on tour. So as I mentioned, this is going to be the horse farm, farmland ID 73. We have our 5.4 horses. 14 horses in total available in here. A nice little riding rink. And then inside here we have our food trough for our horses. And right on in to kind of a, a farmhouse situation. So that's, this is interesting. I've never seen this particular farmhouse before. Oh, right out the back door, right to your, right to your horses. Look at that. Horse lovers are going to enjoy this. Now, right across the street, we're going to have our sheep and pig area. So inside here we have sheep for 25. 25 sheep. We have our wool spawn point and we have our food trough. This farm also has a garden and a small greenhouse. So we have our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive icon here. And we have our dump station. We have our water, we have our interactive icon, and then our pallets. Well, should be here along one of these two sides. And for our pigs, we have our food trough. We have our slurry point. And our activation icon is... Well... Not where one would expect it. It's not at all where one would expect it. In fact, we're not finding it at all. Very, very interesting. So something is going on with that trigger. We're just not able to, to hit it. All right. We have a manure heap. So I'd say look for an update to correct that little issue. We have our slurry point. We have a dump point. We have fuel here. This may be for storage of slurry. Kind of interesting. A nice shed for some storage. And that is the sheep and pig farm. Now let's run back out here to the main road. And we'll make our way back around here. Then this is going to be the main starting farm. So we have our fill point for milk for the cow area. We have our delivery point for our cows. 45 cows in here. Then we have our food and straw triggers. We have our chicken coop, 360 chickens. We have our farm silo, dump, and fill pipe. We have our 
egg spawn point, our chicken feed point. We have our sleep trigger. We have another small garden here. We have some slurry storage. And then we're making our way over to the pig area. So we have our food, we have our water. And we have our pig, 60 pigs in here. And those are all the animals for our starting farm. So for our cows, we have our slurry point around the back here. We have our manure heap. We have a workshop trigger. Fuel tank. I believe this is a fuel tank. Oh, this appears to be completely broken. Make sure I'm actually on land I own. I should be. Yep. Yep. No doubt. I am on land I own. This is a small petrol tank, but we're not getting these pop-ups. So I got a question. Is that even going to work for us? Right here we have another fuel tank. And that's not coming up either. How well was this map actually tested? Because that isn't coming up. Oops, sorry. Wrong button on the keyboard. Yeah. I mean, we should be getting the the trigger to fill that buy it directly in now across the street from this here we have the silage bunkers i mentioned this is on unbuyable unbought land it's not owned farmland id 91. now we are getting the triggers to pop up here so even though we don't own it we may be able to use it and then i found this interesting earlier it's got what looks like a pad here for something. I don't know if this is a building that just isn't placed or what's going on here. I just found that kind of rather interesting. Maybe it's a buildable area to further expand your farm. Maybe this is where a building theoretically was built, but then got torn down. And then we have one more farm, a cow farm, a little bit further down the street. So let's go ahead and just make our way down the street here to the cow farm. We're going to be able to do 45 cows in here. So we have our milk point. We have our slurry point. So this must also then be our dump point for our food and our straw. Interesting placement for that icon. It should really be over here as opposed to over there, but okay. Okay, we'll live with it. Here at the cow farm, we also have two small in ground bunkers. Small amount of vehicle and implement storage. A farm silo. And then we're going to have a wardrobe trigger and a sleep trigger. 
And that is basically a tour of all four of these farms. Very tightly close together. Cow farm. And then this is going to be the horse farm, the back of the horse farm. We have the pig and sheep farm. And then around the corner, we have the starting farm, which is cow, pig, and chicken. Now, just a quick rundown of the productions. We have a bakery, pretty standard bakery. We also have a fairly standard dairy, sugar mill, carpentry. We have a sawmill. We have a spinnery on the map. We have a wheat mill. Or not a wheat mill, but a flour mill. Okay. And then we have one large greenhouse. We have a small greenhouse. And then we have two gardens. And the gardens are a little unique here. So the gardens accept garden substrate, water, seed, solid fertilizer, straw, and manure. I've seen this garden substrate pop up on a few other maps quite a while back. I am not familiar with this mod. I'm not familiar with where you get garden substrate. But what we've already established is in the shop, we don't have any custom vehicles or implements or pallets for anything, including the required mods. So where do you buy your garden substrate? Is it something you produce? Let me know down in the comments below because I don't know, which likely means other people don't know either. Now I do want to just check build mode. Let's just check build mode real fast. We'll come to your productions. Maybe we can manufacture garden substrate and we have to place that down. Not seeing it. Maybe we can buy garden substrate from a fill point. Not seeing that either. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below. What's the deal with garden substrate? I'll go ahead and pin the comment. So others who may not know as well, will have some available information. Now, while we're in here looking, let's go ahead and take a look at our ground textures. We do have few extra ground textures to have been applied and then let's take a look at our plants fairly standard plants and fairly standard trees so i realized i hadn't already shown you the precision farming soil map this map is making use of the alpine soil map so let's go ahead and see how that is applied to these fields We've got a little bit of silty clay south of the farms, but the majority of the land is going to be a mix of loamy sand, sandy loam, and loam. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of altitude and take a little bit of a look around. So here we have our starting farm. And then we have the horse area, horse farm, the pig and sheep farm. Although we couldn't figure out how to buy pigs. And then we had the standalone cow farm. Across the street from the main starting farm, we had this area, which I'll, I'll call maybe a, a rudimentary building and or expansion yard. We had two open bunkers. We had that area over here that looked like it should have had a building next to it. And then we've got some open space there. Now, in addition, right next to the starting farm, just to the north, we do have a bit of land. And here we have a large greenhouse. So I've gone ahead and bought this. And we have our interactive icon there. We have our water point, and then we have our pallet spawn point. 
Now, right next to that, we have another viable plot of land that has these stakes. I don't really know what's going on here. All right, so here's our large greenhouse. Then we have this. And we have these stakes. I don't know. I mean, it's almost like it's set up for grapes, but these aren't grapevines. Or for olive trees, but these aren't olive trees. Anybody have an idea what this might be? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's make our way over here to the east. A bit of forested area. And then we're going to make our way. And over here we have our stone crusher. So we're going to be able to sell our stones. In this nice fine area. And then just to the south of that, we have our sugar mill. So this map has 12 productions built in. We have a BGA, a bakery, a dairy, a sugar mill, a carpentry, a sawmill, a spinnery. We have the flour mill, large greenhouse, small greenhouse, and the two gardens. So we have our interactive icon around the front. Dump point around the back. And our pallet spawn point is, well, not marked. I'm going to assume it's going to be right here at the doors, but it's not marked. We make our way to the south, south of the starting town here. We got a bit of forestry going on. We got some nice fields kind of mixed in here with some clearings. And we have two cell points down here. We have a sport complex, and we have a open bath. That's how it's named in the PDA. So let's go ahead and take a look. It's going to be to the south of the town. We have a sports ground and the open air bath. So we have a dump point there, and we have our dump point there. We follow this road to basically the north into our starting town. We have our dairy production, our interactive icon, our dump point, and our pallet spawn point. Across the street from that, we have one of our two gas stations. We have a cell point for potatoes and sugar beets, some of our root crops. We have a dump point there. We have a lime buy point. And this dump point is going to be for the land handle, Rochester land handle. And again, now we have all of our farm yards. We also have a bakery here at this town. Interactive icon, dump point, and pallet spawn point. Now let's loop around north because none of our, we don't have any other real points of interest until we get over there to that town to the west. Now, with respect to our scoring metric, well, we're giving the map a full point because we do have 12 productions built in, and you could put more down, like that area across the street. So if we're going to give the map a full point with respect to productions being built in or areas set aside for such. With respect to the ability to sell all of our basin crops, animal outputs, and productions. We're going to be giving the map a full point because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items and so forth. With respect to the farms being customizable. Well, we'll talk about that one here in a moment because that's a little bit of a sticky point. Over here, we have our animal dealer. We have a bale sell point. And then we have a slurry storage point. At least that's how the icons are appearing. Let's see how that is configured here as a slurry trader. So this is going to be a slurry sell point. 
as opposed to being a storage point. Sure does look like we're missing a building here now, doesn't it? Now this could be a buildable area because it is a viable farmland, but it really does make me feel that there is supposed to be a building there. But then again, we have this fencing, like it's construction fencing. So that's pretty neat how that's been set up. Over here we have the flour mill. So we have our interactive icon, we have our dump point, and then we have our pallet spawn point. Making our way around the road. Well, we're over here, we're coming to another lime buy point. And this is actually our spinnery. So we have our dump point, we have our interactive icon here, and we have our pallet point for our spinnery. We have another grain cell point here. This is not an actual train cell point. This is just kind of a deco area. We have our vehicle dealer. And let's go ahead and pick up the Mahindra. We have our dealer trigger. But where, oh, where are our trigger markers? A little bit of a trend we've seen here on the map. So our dealer trigger is right here at these two roll down doors. But it would be nice to have actually seen the markers. We've got a pretty decent area for vehicles to spawn here. And a very large area for our vehicles to exit. Right across the street from our vehicle dealer, we have the GLW cell point. We have our fuel point. We have a grocery cell point. The dump station there. And then here we have two sheds. They're just off by themselves. And this is buyable land. So we have a shed we can buy there. And we have a shed we can buy here. We have a biogas plant. And we can sell the biogas plant. But what we can't sell are the light poles around the BGA nor can we sell these three three-sided bunkers. Have another nice area here where we can put some sheds down if we should so wish and a three bay garage. We have our carpentry production right here and then right beside it we have our sawmill. So it's nice when these two productions are close together makes it rather convenient All right so we have a wood cell trigger we have our pallet spawn point for our planks we have our pallet spawn point for our furniture we have our wood dump point and plank dump point for our carpentry our interactive icon we have our interactive icon for the sawmill and our fill point for our wood chips and that's that's the map that's pretty much the map what we've got going on here now Let's circle back here to our starting farms. And let's talk about farms being sellable and customizable. But before that, this area also, this is also one of those viable sheds that we mentioned earlier on in the video. And this one happens to have a silage bunker associated with it as well. Now, most of the buildings at all four of these farms are not sellable. We had a little bit of a bump here in the field. So if this map gets updated, this might be smoothed out. And if it is smoothed out, that's going to require a game save. Update. So lots of the buildings on all of these farms isn't sellable. Other farm buildings that are sellable, well, there's deco elements around all these buildings that isn't sellable either. So, quite honestly, I'm going to flag this as, are the farms customizable? Not really. 
And since they're not really customizable, we're going to give the map just a quarter of a point. Buildings very properly are using the new texturing technique. Sure. They look fine. Uh, none of them are super, super low res textures. Oh. Huh. What is that? A little bit of a concrete crack just floating up here in the sky. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine. So we're going to give the map a full point there. And we're going to give the map three quarters of a point. Maybe we should take a half a point, but I'm going to be a little generous. Go three quarters of a point with respect to triggering an interactive being clearly marked. There's areas around the map that really should have the trigger markers located with the little corner markers. There's also areas where, like at the pigs, the by pig area isn't isn't working or isn't where it's marked and isn't anywhere as close to where it's marked because we couldn't find it by walking around with the F1 menu up. So three quarters of a point there. That's going to give this map a score of four out of five. Pretty decent score, but I do feel that maybe, maybe if you're on the fence about playing this one, maybe you should wait it out a little bit and see if it gets updated. Now then, we also have this area. And this isn't really a, a niggle on the map. But this area feels like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. Because there isn't anything down here. If we pull up the triggers, there's nothing. It's just, it's just deco. But it feels like this could have been so much more. Like a spawn point for rocks. Maybe a spawn point for not realistic lime. Um, or something, and then have maybe a line production that would accept rocks because, you know, this is taking a pretty good sized area here, but there really isn't any sort of use to it. Let me know your all thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map. And until next time, happy farming.